All right, multi-step synthesis. That's just a fancy way of saying that we need to string together more than one reaction in order to make a product. And there's some strategies that you can use to make the process simpler. And the process has a name. It's called retrosynthetic analysis, a retrosynthetic approach. Retro just meaning backwards. Um, and synthesis, well, that's making new molecules. So the, in the retrosynthetic approach, here's the main idea. We're going to try and to, let's scroll this down. Um, we're trying to get to our product as quickly as we can. And that's analogous to trying to go through a maze as quickly as you can. So I got a maze here. And the maze has multiple entrances over here. So you can enter the maze by various means, different entrances, but there's only one exit. Okay, and so the strategy is, how do you get through this maze as quickly as you can? Well, some people say it's cheating, but not here, not in chemistry. The best way is to enter here. Go in backwards through the maze. Yeah, retrosynthetic analysis, retro, just go backwards. That's the fastest way. So if that's not convincing, then let's try the normal way. You might say, hey, okay, I'm supposed to go into an entrance, so I'll just randomly pick this one. And then you kind of say, oh, yeah, because I got all this clear path over here. This is going to be fast. Woo, just go way down here, and then you have to make some decisions. I don't know, I'm going to go way down here, loop around here, and then now I'm trying to make my way to my exit, and that's as close as I can get. Darn it. Well, okay, I'm just going to crash to the wall, and out I go. Yay, I'm done. <laughs> okay, and then the instructor finds your mistake and takes a whole bunch of points off. Ouch. Okay. Um, no, don't do it that way. No, the best way to get through this maze as quickly as you can is enter here and just go backwards and just kind of say, okay, where can I go? Well, I'm going to go down here, maybe wrap around this way. Keep heading to the left. And just see where it's going to take you. Well, look, there's a dead end over there. Oh, this is going out. Oh, hey, there's the exit right there. Okay. Okay, so the best entrance is right here, third from the bottom. And maybe that wasn't obvious. Well, I don't think it was obvious <laughs> when you first looked at the maze. Okay, so that's the idea. Go in through the, through the exit and work your way backwards and just see where it takes you. And don't plan on coming out through one of those entrances. Just... Find any entrance, so I'll get, your, get you out. Okay, so that's the plan. And now here's the problem. Okay, on the exam, it won't be phrased this way. I just chose this problem just to illustrate the point of multi-step synthesis. Yeah, multi-step synthesis. We're trying to make this molecule as quickly as you can. And in this problem, we're only given four possible starting materials. And so it's designed so that there is not just one reaction that can take one of these four and change it into the product. No, instead you have to think about starting with one of these four on the left and then doing a series of reactions that can change it into, what is this, one hexene. Sorry, still getting used to this pen. Okay, so let's see. The wrong way to do it would be to say, hey, I'm just going to fly right into this. Um, let's, um, let's see which of these four entrances they want to do it. Wrong way. <laughs> Pick an entrance and go for it. Okay, I'm going to say, hmm, you know what? Double bond and the products at the end, and in this molecule, there's a double bond at the end. Maybe that's the best choice. And uh, you already know the answer. No, it's not. But we don't know that at the start. So let's put this down here. We want to find a way to change that into this one. Okay, give myself some more room down here. So we're just picking away. And remember, this is the wrong approach. Well, let's see. What do we need to do? We need to go from five carbons 
the six carbons. And what you have to do is have all your reactions memorized and kind of go through that list in your head and realize, hmm, was there any reaction that created bigger molecules? And it turns out there will be more than one, but right there, right now at this point, I think we've only seen one reaction. And that's the extension of terminal alkynes. We start with an alkyne that has a hydrogen at the end of the triple bond. And then you can use sodium amide to remove that hydrogen at the end. Get a lone pair on the carbon, negative charge. And then it's your, your call. If you want to put the counter ion, you can, the balance of charge, but you don't have to. Again, the organic chemist says, hey, uh, I only want to know what's happening to carbon. And then, let's get a little more room down here. Um, you use that anion of the triple bond as a good nucleophile and react it with either a methyl halide or a primary halide, right? So this is a methyl halide, methyl chloride, but it could also be a primary halide. They work well too. And then what happens is a lone pair, toxic carbon, um, I should have drawn a bond to the chlorine, that bond breaks off to the chlorine, and you get the methyl group adding to the end of the triple bond. Right, so this lone pair turns into that bond connecting two carbons, the two carbons together. And so what you end up doing is you take a two carbon piece and you make it into three carbons. Okay, so that's the trick. We want to use this reaction to make the molecule bigger. Okay, so we got a reaction that can make the molecule longer. Now, how are we going to make it work here? Because we don't have a triple bond. So, let's see. We would, um, again, this is kind of a wrong way approach. But maybe what we would think about is somehow connecting a triple bond to the end of this molecule here. And to do that, if you're going to connect the triple bond to the end of the molecule, you need it to be a primary halide. So maybe that's a strategy. Let's change this to a primary halide. So we need to make something that looks like this. How are we going to do that? How are we going to add a chlorine to the end of a, of a chain of carbons? Well, you have to kind of go back in your mind and think about what reactions change a hydrogen into a chlorine. And there is one reaction that does that. It's chlorination, free radical chlorination. And what we studied in class was take methane and add Cl2 and light or heat and through a free radical mechanism, we get substitution. One of the hydrogens is replaced with a chlorine. Okay, and so um, we might blindly just say, okay, try that. Cl2 with light, H nu for light. And somehow um, this last hydrogen down here is preferred over all the other hydrogens and gets substituted. Okay, that's, that's a bad assumption. But again, we're bursting through the wall, right? We're kind of like the student who said, I'm just going to crash through. And, uh, you know, we got that maze over here and just break through the walls and get to the end any way possible. Again, the wrong approach. Okay, so this reaction changes a hydrogen into a chlorine. And so blindly we put that in place here, hoping that it's only the hydrogen at the end that will be substituted. And then, and you can see how that's a problem, right? Um, there's lots of hydrogens in this molecule. So lots of hydrogens up there that could be substituted. And there's another problem we'll point out later. And then off to the side, we would say, okay, let's take some acetylene or ethyne. And let's take the hydrogen off the end with sodium amide. And we get the anion of the triple bond, and now we just mix the two. 
So we got our primary halide. This is primary, so at least that part's good. It's primary chloride. And we add in the triple bond. And boom, the lone pair is going to attack right here on that carbon and displace the chloride. And then we get, let's see, we would get a triple bond connected where the chlorine is. And then how do we get to the end? Um, well, we would think about removing the triple bond here and make it a single bond. And oh yeah, okay, remember hydrogenation can do that. We'll just use some palladium metal as a catalyst, hydrogenate it, take off those pi bonds, make a single bond. We're done! Yeah, we just kind of crashed through the maze. <laughs> right? Okay, so hopefully you can see some errors in this and you won't take this approach. Um, starting over at the beginning, you know, the bad I so the wrong things here. Uh, the bad idea was to start with this double bond with five carbons. Um, just blindly picking it because it resembled the product. Um, no, this... This molecule has some problems, or this, these, these reactions have some problems. First of all, as soon as you mix a Cl2 with this molecule, even if you add the light or not, the double bond is going to react right away. Remember what happened, what does a triple, oh, sorry, what does a double bond do with Cl2? Yeah, it's a, an addition reaction, and you're going to get two chlorines adding to the end, and you're going to lose that double bond. Okay, so that's the first problem, is the Cl2 is going to react with the double bond at the end, because alkenes, double bonds, are much more reactive than al alkanes. And then the second problem we kind of hinted at, this reaction is not selective. There's no way for it to discriminate between this primary hydrogen and a secondary one, although we did talk in class that the secondary hydrogens are actually favored, because in the free radical mechanism, we're going to make a secondary radical here, and that's more stable than primary. So even if the Cl2 doesn't react with the double bond, the chlorine is going to prefer to go to the secondary carbons, not the primary. Okay, and then let's see. Let's see, if you had this molecule here, it would react with acetylene, the anion of acetylene, and make this product, so that's not bad. So this reaction alone right here is good. Um, but this is a problem, right? Um, how does hydrogen know to only attack the triple bond and leave the double bond alone? Um, it doesn't. It's going to react with them, with all of them. You're going to just get, whoops, you're just going to get hexane. Or are you? This molecule has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops. So this is actually going to make, not that molecule up there, but it's going to make heptane. So lots of errors here, darn it, and not too many points to give the student if this is their proposed synthesis of one hexene, right? So that's, that was a goal, is to get to this product, and we just wasted all that time, and we're not going to get many points out of that. Okay, the right strategy. That's where you work backwards. So you start here, and maybe take a glance over here at the starting materials, just kind of have a an idea of what some possible starting materials could be, sort of like your target. That's where we want to end up when we think about working our way backwards. Okay, so the first thing I would do in retrosynthetic analysis is say, okay, what molecule do I have to make? Oh well, yeah, it's one hexene. Um, what's the key features about one hexene? It has six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it has an alkene. And so now what you begin to do is say, okay, out of all those reactions I had to memorize, which ones made alkenes? Oh boy. Um, think about it a little while. Maybe look at other parts of the exam for some, you know, some clues. Kind of remind you of some reactions that make alkene. And I think there are only two so far. And that's where you take a triple bond and react it with hydrogen gas. And Lindlar's catalyst, and that will give you the cis alkene. Or you can take the triple bond and react it with lithium and ammonia. Lithium metal, liquid ammonia as a solvent, and then you get the trans alkene. 
Okay, then what you do is you say, okay, great. Um, I'll just pick one of those reactions to make my, my, um, my, my molecule. So the very last step in my, f so kind of looking ahead to what the answer is going to be for the exam, we want to end up with this molecule, one hexene, and the very last step of our sequence will be one of these molecules, one of these reactions, sorry. And if we use Linlar catalyst, then the molecule would have a triple bond at the end. And that'll be the same reagent for the lithium ammonia reaction. So just pick one of them. And I'm just going to pick the hydrogen gas with Linlar's catalyst. I don't like that H, so I'm going to fix it. <laughs> That's a little better. Okay, so working backwards, we say, hey, now if we had one hexine, we could use hydrogen gas and linear catalyst to make the product. Yay, so we get some points there. But this molecule is not one of the starting materials. The starting materials are acetylene and one pentine, and what is this, trans, three hexene, and then benzene, of course. Oh boy. Um, we haven't seen any benzene reactions yet. That's next semester, so this one's kind of out for now. That's just a... Uh, just something to avoid until next semester. Let's see. So now, brand new problem. How do we make this molecule with the triple bond at the end? Hmm. Oh, wait. What if we had the triple bond with a lone pair of electrons at the end? And then connected it to four carbons, right? So take these three. Sorry, that's two. Take those two. Got the triple bond. Take these four, that's those four, and connect them together. Um, well, the way to connect them together is with a primary halide. And oh, looky there. This molecule looks really similar to this one up here. And that's the key. What you want to do is take a settling, which is your starting material, one of the entrances to your maze, treat it with sodium amide, NaNH2, to make the anion, and then to make this molecule, we're going to add the primary halide, make sure I don't lose a carbon, <laughs> there we go, we got, um, what is this, one chlorobutane, reacted with the triple bond, anion the triple bond, it makes this molecule, and then we add hydrogen gas, so then like catalyst to get Delbon. And there you go, there's a synthesis. Multi-step. It takes three steps to get to the product. Start here with the acetylene, add one reaction with um, sodium amide, add a second reaction with one chlorobutane, and then a third reaction with H2 and Lindlar catalyst, and then three step synthesis. We make the product. And we got through the, to, through the maze in a legal and full credit manner. Um, one point to make for exams, we're going to have to make all molecules that contain carbon. So we, we said we have to start with acetylene. Well, that was fine. We were told we could start with acetylene. Those have carbons. But this molecule we brought in, one chlorobutane, we have to make that. And so in the homework, and in the sample test, and of course on the exam, we'll, we'll talk about legal starting materials to make the one chlorobut um, yeah, one chlorobutane. Okay, so if you have more questions about multi-step synthesis, take a look at the homework and the answer key there. Um, come see me during office hours or send me an email.